It's a firestorm that's lasted 10 years. I bet you remember November 1st, 2006, the miracle that happened that afternoon, the crime that remains unsolved, the justice never served. Just think back, it was just after lunch when a high school packed with kids burned to the ground. The miracle is everyone got out alive. The injustice, no one ever arrested, no one ever charged for starting that fire. And that fire could have played out oh so differently. Tonight, we're going to do something different, something special. We're going to take the time to talk about what happened in room 221 at Eastern Guilford High School nearly 10 years ago. A case now cold, but not closed. A fire that might just be the most expensive case of arson this state has ever seen and a person of interest who could be watching right now. Eastern Guilford High School. It's just going to go out. Commercial structure fire. We got a copy that it was in the chemistry lab. Guess where's fire I seen? The fire is in room 221. It was a fire breathing. They've lost everything. Raging storm. That building's history. You're looking at about 100 firefighters on this scene. A flame. Everything was gone. Everything was burned. November 1st, 2006, a devil of a day. And this is several miles away, but you can see the, the, uh, the smoke billowing out of Eastern Guilford High School. That hot roof on it, it's hot tar, and it's just melting on top of people. We're seeing some video right now of somebody on a stretcher. A day that still burns. It really scared me. Pulled open the door and across the back of the room were flames. It was almost disabling. And she said there was fire in the chemistry room and the flames were unreal didn't have time for fear <laughs> it was more shock i stepped just a few steps down and pulled the fire alarm volunteer firefighters kirby shepherd and chris wells got there first the entire room was filling up with smoke we couldn't see the heat was starting to intensify we have a large working fire on the second floor did it confine to one room? At this time, we're uh, working on the roof line. Also, we're going to need more holes on the engine 371. The conditions began to deteriorate, and I have never been in a fire where the conditions, they deteriorated that rapid. And I believe you told me later that it was like going from day to night. It was. And I mean, I, just in an instant. You don't need to be in the building. You need to be out for that smoke. Chris's three-man team reached room 221 from the stairs and found flames climbing the walls in the rear of the classroom. They were too late. Okay, do you have the fire knocked down? Negative. We do not have the fire knocked down. I think it was burning 15, 20 minutes before, before it really broke out. Former McLeansville chief Donnie Shepard commanded a force of more than a hundred firefighters that day. It's jumping classroom to classroom. On. We've got uh, heavy fire in the ceiling. The roof is caving in. Get them now. Makes me ill that on, on my watch, we couldn't put it out, even with all the help we had. If it's unsafe, let's get them out of there. And it's not safe. For 51 hours. It burned their school. I guess it's like a death in the family. You know, you, you, you don't want to lose it, but you realize it's gone. My own uh, daughter was just a few doors down the hall. Mm. My son was in the building. A lot of people said that was the worst day of our school. And I think it was the best day because we all got out. It's a miracle more than 1,100 students, teachers, and staff made it out of that building. This is a section of the actual roof from Eastern Guilford High School. This was given to me by a Guilford County Fire Marshal. So after the flames climbed up to the roof, they initially crawled above the ceiling and in a void space, which was below the roof of the building. That was bad for the building, but it was good for the people inside. Bad for the building because the air system was pulling the flames across the building above the heads of everyone and that air system just kept the fire spreading. As it spread, the fire then burned through the building's tar covered roof, which is above this metal portion. And that tar gave the fire more fuel to burn as it was dripping from the very top of the building. But while the air system was pulling the fire, it was keeping the fire above the ceiling 
and above the heads of those 1,100 kids and faculty, giving them the time they needed to escape. But the most dramatic escape in this case involves whoever set this fire. In a Two Wants to Know exclusive, I talked to the initial lead investigator who says the person of interest today works as a firefighter right here in the triangle. No rumors from the kids that this could be arson. The questions came almost immediately. That's not confirmed or denied right at this moment. We haven't ruled out anything at all. And we're interviewing uh, numerous people this morning. And there will be physical evidence left. We've gotten some pictures. We would ask that if anybody has any tips or information, they'd call Crime Stoppers. Now for the first time, the first man on the case is giving details about the person of interest who he says currently works as a triad firefighter. When, when I talked with him, it was fairly clear to me that I was on the right path. But whether or not he'll ever say I did it and here's why and how, who knows. Eddie Harris focused on one person of interest for five years before he retired as a Guilford County fire investigator. I'm satisfied that individual was responsible. He interviewed the person of interest within a month of the fire. In my conversation with him, I tried to steer him toward, let's talk about what you did, not the result of it. And uh, he, was, he was very upset. He was shaking his head in the affirmative. So he's doing this. He's, he's acknowledging what I felt was responsibility. He was very upset. He was crying. And he just, he just changed his mind. He just decided he didn't want to discuss this any further. What did he say? He said, I got to go. And he got up and left. Is that the moment you think you were closest to getting to the end of this case as far as finding who's responsible? Yes. I felt that I, I felt that we were minutes away from him telling me what happened and why it happened um, and, and getting it behind him. So is he in the fire service? That's what I understand. Videos, DVDs. Five years after Harris retired, cold case detectives took over. Statements of witnesses, statements of uh, employees at the school. But they're no closer to solving the case. When was the last time you interviewed the person you've identified? Never. As, excuse me? Never. He hasn't been interviewed. How is that possible? Uh, just hasn't been interviewed. Uh, uh, not by us, not by the cold case team. And in this particular case, uh, the person of interest did not want to talk to us, refused. Attorney Joel Oakley says he denied detectives' request to talk to his client because he says an investigator, quote, already made up his mind. He went on to say it was, quote, not a fair investigation this time. Oakley claims the person of interest cooperated with the initial investigation, passed a lie detector test, and, quote, there was nothing more he could do to prove his innocence. Oakley denied our request to talk on camera. Are you closer to making arrest than you were, let's say, this time last year? I wouldn't say we were uh, closer to making an arrest. Do you think he's watching? Probably. Do you think he's afraid of getting caught? Sure. After all these years, no suspect has been named for this, destroying Eastern Guilford High School. We're told there simply is not enough evidence for a conviction. If you're not shocked yet, get this. Whoever set that fire is more than likely to get away with it. According to the FBI, only 22% of arson cases ever get solved. That's one in four. Ironically, the retired investigator, Eddie Harris, says the rate in Guilford County has wavered between 50 and 67% the last 10 years, which is way better than the national average. And here's a shocker. Harris says if the arsonist came forward 10 years ago, they likely would not have gone to prison and still might not spend a day in jail if they come forward today, and that upsets people who still feel burned. So everybody start rushing out the rooms and everything. Thousands of people in a frenzy. We're not going to be back at that school ever again. It's just really upsetting. Thousands of lives changed. From what I have seen, I don't think you're going to salvage that school. Sixty-one million dollars. We had uh, some cuts, uh, debris to the eye, and uh, one firefighter sustained minor burns. No thanks to one fire starter. 
Okay, the call was dispatched at uh, 1408. Former McLeansville Fire Chief Donnie Shepard wants the criminal caught. You know, every time I look at them bricks, I'm thinking, well, you really done it. You're the reason that we've got these bricks and these papers with all these pictures in it. And hopefully, I hope you can sleep at night. That's all I can say. These are the leftover bricks that, that we saved. Eastern faculty member Carol King wants answers. I would have to ask them why. And I think about this often. How do they live with themselves on a daily basis? I think they need to man up. Yeah. Math teacher Craig Loring was two doors down from room 221. Seems like the punishment should be increased per year. They have to live with themselves. I don't have to live with them. It bothers me that um, that they still haven't arrested somebody. You know, that, that bothers me. Front office worker Becky Apple. Do you think you know who did it? I think I do. No. Have you ever talked to that person? No. Would no. you want to talk? No, not about this. I've heard the name. I've heard the name. Our first firefighters on the scene didn't like to hear the person of interest suits up as a triad firefighter. Yeah, that kind of makes me mad. They should question why they're actually doing the job. Thousands of people waiting for an arsonist to come clean. Some days I really do want them to step up and say, you know, I did that, and I'm sorry I did it, and this is the reason I did it. I don't think it'll happen. I mean, if it hasn't happened up to this point. So think about it. This fire cost $61 million, not to mention the 51 hours firefighters spent fighting the fire and countless hours detectives spent investigating and still are to this day. The students had to go to three separate campuses for more than two years. The saving grace here is that no one died. Personally, I know I'll never forget November 1st, 2006, Julie.